question number 11 find out the plasma calicrin inhibitor approved for treatment of acute attack of hereditary angioedema so question is find out the plasma calicrin inhibitor the options are Icartiban, Icartiban, Ecolantide, Alcaftadin and Epinastin. The right answer for the question is option number B, Ecolantide. This is the calicarin blocker useful for treatment of angioedema. Whereas ICA, Icartiban is a bradykinin antagonist useful for angioedema. Whereas the alcaftadin and epinastin both are antihistamine useful to control allergy or angioedema. Now I go one important point for you. The point is we have one condition called hereditary angioedema. This is a pathology caused by C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency. For this case we can try Icartiban, a bradykinin antagonist, or else we can use a human recombinant C1 esterase inhibitor analog named by Ruconist. Remember, Ruconist is a recombinant C1 esterase inhibitor analog, or else we can use Ecolantide. A protein in one more newer drug LANG, Lana D. Lumab. All these three drugs are calicarin inhibitor useful for treatment of angioedema. And one more hormonal preparation useful for angioedema is called Danasol. Danasol is anti androgen with anti prostonic and anti estrogenic action called Danasol. So, a hormonal preparation useful for angioedema in thing of Danasol. So, you should know what are all the important drugs useful for treatment of hereditary angioedema. The next question, which one of the following anti helminthic agent acting by inhibiting polymerization of microtubule? The option given are Mevendazole, Piperacin, Levomisole and Prosequintal. The right answer question is option number A called Mevendazole. So, we now going to discuss what are all the different anti helminthic agents and what is their mechanism of action. Hi doctors, how are you? Today we are going to discuss drugs useful for treatment of helminthic infestation. So first we are going to study classification of anti-helminthic drugs. We are going to classify anti-helminthic drugs based on their mechanism of action. So here, the first classification will be, there are some drugs acting by inhibiting polymerization of microtubules by binding with the beta tubulin. So when they binding with the beta tubulin of microtubule, there is interference of uptake of glucose, thereby the helminthic agent going for destruction. Anti-helminthic drug acting by this mechanism includes one group of drug called benzimidazole. The example for benzimidazole category drugs are albendazole, mebendazole, thiabendazole and triclobendazole. In these three the most important drugs are albendazole, mebendazole and triclobendazole. They are very 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 important commonly used anti-helminthic agents. The second way of classification of anti-helminthic drug is there are some drugs going to cause 
paralysis of worms paralysis by causing paralysis they going to destroy the worms for example there are some drug acting on n n receptor in the worms and causing spasticity contraction it is called spastic paralysis that means these drugs are having cholinergic property astigol like action they call cholino mimetic property drugs this category drugs are pyrindel palmavate levomisole and triclobendazole in this three the most important drugs you should know include pyrindel palmavate levomisole this are very very important drug they cause spastic paralysis of worms here the very popular mc question is levomisole a anti helminthic drug underline this drug having immunomodulatory action so mc question will be find out which one of the following anti helminthic drug having immunomodulatory action is levomisole very important mc question the third classification of anti helminthic drugs will be there are some drug acting via gaba a receptor and causes opening of chloride ionic channel by opening chloride channel a large amount of chloride are enter causing hyperpolarization of nerves and muscle that be causing placid paralysis so there are some drug causing placid paralysis thereby destroying the worms this category drugs are we having piperacin ivermectin and moxidectin in this three the popular drugs are piperacin important and one more drug ivermectin very 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 important drug the fourth classification the fourth way of classification there is a drug going to cause influx of calcium ionic channel that drug is prosequintel the most popular drug prosequintel the fifth classification will be there are some drug causes uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation this category drugs are bethionol and niclosamide they are not commonly used anyway you should know bethionol niclosamide causes uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation the last one more important class of anti helminth drug a drug going to cause altering of microfilarial membrane and increasing the phagocytosis this category drug is diethyl carbazine so called dec so what we done so far is we classified anti helminthic agent based on their mechanism action after discussing classification now we want to import question number 13 which is false regarding fluconazole the option given are plasma concentration of fluconazole essentially the same whether the drug is given orally or intravenously option b bioavailability is increased by taking with the food option b c renal excretion accounting for more than 90% of drug elimination option d significant increase in tetralogy of fluid in babies born to mother who receiving fluconazole the right answer for the question is option number b the explanation is fluconazole the azole group of anti fungal drug bio availability of fluconazole does not going to change either by taking the food or altering the acidity so food will not interfere absorption of fluconazole that's important information whereas it going to attain the same concentration of plasma concentration whenever whether given orally or intravenously and maximally the drug undergo excretion through kidney and the drug have a risk of teratogenicity question number 
find out the drug useful in radical cure of plasmodium vivax infection see for vivax infection we should give radical therapy after giving a standard therapy for radical therapy we have one drug called primaquine other than primaquine we have one new drug called tefanoquine so remember primaquine primaquine and one more drug called tefanoquine both are useful for radical therapy of plasmodium vivax infection now question number 15 anti cancer drug having mono amino oxidase enzyme inhibitory action is the option given are carmestin procarbesin ifosfamide and busulfan the right answer for the question is option number b procarbesin <coughs> remember all the given option in this questions are belonging to alkylating agent so now we are going to discuss the most important information about all the four alkylating agent in detail anyway remember procarbesin a drug cause having mao enzyme inhibit reaction so risk of cheese reaction now we are going to discuss importance of alkylating agent question now cyclophosphamide it's a very 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 important anti cancer drug the first mc question it's a pro drug cyclophos is a pro drug this drug first undergo metabolism in the liver and produces some metabolite called aldophosphamide and chloroacetaldehyde the two important metabolites of cyclophosphamide includes aldophosphamide and chloroacetaldehyde here the aldophosphamide further undergo metabolism and produces two more important metabolites called phosphoramide mustard and acrolein in these two metabolite acrolein is the dangerous metabolite causing so many side effect so we should know what are the metabolites of cyclophosphamide includes phosphoramide mustard acrolein and chloroacetaldehyde now we move to therapeutic uses of cyclophosphamide remember doctor cyclophosphamide having anti cancerous action as well as immuno suppressive action as the anti cancer drug it is useful for treatment of testicular cancer lung cancer breast cancer as well as useful for head and neck cancer but at the same time you should know it is having immuno suppressive property because of having immuno suppressive action it is useful for some autoimmune disease for example cyclophosphamide is the drug of choice for vaginis granulomatosis so very important question it's a drug of choice for vaginis granulomatosis as well as it is plays a major role in the treatment of nephrotic syndrome as well as useful for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis remember doctor for steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome the best option is cyclophosphamide and cyclophosphamide also useful in rheumatoid arthritis that mean it has anti cancer action plus immuno suppressive action now coming to the adverse effects of cyclophosphamide now we are going to discuss adverse effects of cyclophosphamide the most important adverse effect it causes hemorrhagic cystitis very 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 important most important problem causing hemorrhagic cystitis this problem is due to one metabolite called acrolein please note down doctor which is the metabolite of cyclophosphamide responsible for hemorrhagic cystitis mean acrolein acrolein because of hemorrhagic cystitis the patient having complaints of hematuria so to control the hematuria i want one antidote for cyclophosphamide the drug going to cause detoxification of acrolein the drug is mesna 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 mean mercaptol 
ethyl sulfonylic acid it is the antidote for cyclophosphamide can be used intravenously as well as orally this mesna going to detoxify acrolein thereby useful to control hemorrhagic cystitis but if you study harrison textbook he says to control the cyclophosphamide induced hematuria best option is mesna i do agree but it is mesna alone is not sufficient so to have a better efficacy along with mesna we give supplementation of formalin or n acetyl cysteine or carboprast carboprast solution mesna is the specific antidote for cyclophosphamide to have a better efficacy mesna combined with either carboprost carboprost is a prostaglandin pgf2 alpha agonist or mesna can be combined with n acetyl cysteine n acetyl cysteine is a mycolytic agent it's also a wonderful drug for parastropisering so n acetyl cysteine can be used with mesna to control hematuria anyway doctor one of the most important adverse effect of cyclophosphamide hemorrhagic cystitis due to acrolein but cyclophosphamide also causes so many other problem like it may cause sadh because of causing sadh anti diuretic hormone action it causes too much of water retention that may cause dilutional hyponatremia so another problem it causes sadh and also it causes cardiotoxicity as well as myelosuppression so here in summary the adverse effects important adverse effect of cyclophosphamides are number 1 hemorrhagic cystitis number 2 sadh number 3 cardiotoxicity and also causing myelosuppression and one more important question we know cyclophosphamide produces one more metabolite called chloroacetaldehyde this metabolite causing side effect of nephrotoxicity as well as neurotoxicity that finishes important metabolites of cyclophosphamide important therapeutic uses and important adverse effect of cyclophosphamide and then we had one drug called ifos i phosphamide it's an analog of cyclophosphamide this drug also produces two important metabolite namely acrolein and chloroacetaldehyde but this metabolite is slowly formed and the metabolite accumulate in the body for longer period so i phosphamide causes more problem than cyclophosphamide because this metabolites going to accumulate in the body for longer period now we should know since they cause accumulation of acrolein it causes hemorrhagic cystitis for this same antidote mesna so remember mesna is the antidote for both cyclophosphamide as well as for ifosphamide and one more point ifosphamide also produces a metabolite called chloroacetaldehyde that we know already causing neurotoxicity and nephrotoxicity here one more important question the neurotoxicity can be minimized by using methylene blue so methylene blue able to control neurotoxicity produced by chloroacetaldehyde anyway doctor you should know one point comparing to cyclophosphamide i phosphamide causes more hemorrhagic cystitis and more neurotoxicity because they going to accumulate the metabolite for longer period coming to last point i phosphamide useful for treatment of testicular cancer as well as useful for osteosarcoma so you should know cyclophosphamide if i phosphamide are very 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 important alkylating agent the next important drug is mechlorethamine it's also one important alkylating agent the mechlorethamine 
useful for treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma as well as useful for treatment of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. But the most important MCQ, miclarethamine, the first MCQ question you should know, it causes skin vesicin problem, very important, very important. So a yeah, alkylating agent, most commonly causes skin vesicin problem in think of miclarethamine. So what we done is, and one more important question, for treating the vesicin caused by miclarethamine, we can use injection thiosulfate. At the site of lesion, we can inject thiosulfate. So, miclar ethamine induced skin vesicin are treated by injection thiosulfate. In this junction, you should know one more point. Some other anti-cancer drug also causing vesicin. For example, even doxorubicin, vincristin also make a skin vesicin. So, Vesicin is the side effect of what are all the anti-cancer drug mean? Imagine miclorethamine, doxorubicin and vincristin. Now, another group of alkylating agent called nitrosoureas. First, we should know what are all the example for nitrosoureas. The examples are carmestine, lomestine, zemestine, and streptosocin. These are example for nitrosoureas group of alkylating agent. In the first MC question, carmestin, lomestin, zemestin. These three drugs are highly lipid soluble. Very important. These three drugs are highly lipid soluble. So easily crossing the blood brain barrier. So useful for treatment of brain tumor. So carmestin, lomestin, zemestin useful for treatment of brain tumor. The next point, the common adverse effect of carmestin, lomestin, zemestin are myelosuppression. Remember doctor, they cause delayed myelosuppression and sustained myelosuppression. Remember, most of the anti-cancer drug causing myelosuppression within a week, but these drugs are causing delayed myelosuppression and sustained myelosuppression. Next important question, the z causes adverse effect of renal failure. So, z we are not using clinically. It is not in use because of causing severe kidney failure. And coming to last one more drug, streptosocin. The streptosocin is called as chemical pancreatectomy agent. So, it is useful for treatment of pancreatic eyelid cell carcinoma. Remember, it is called chemical pancreatectomy agent. That finishes some important MCQs on nitrosoureas group of alkylating agent. Now we move on to alkylating agent causing methylation. What are all the examples for alkylating agent causing methylation reaction in thing of procarbacin, docarbacin and timosolamide. Procarbacin docarbacin and timosolamide. These are causing methylation reaction. In that first MC question, procarbacin, an important drug useful for treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Useful in Hodgkin's lymphoma. This drug causing adverse effect, most importantly, myelosuppression as well as neurotoxicity. But the two more very, very, very important MC question. Procarbacin causes disulfiram-like reaction in alcoholic patient. That means, in the alcoholic patient for treating cancer, if we give Procarbacin, this drug may cause disulfiram-like reaction. This is very important question. Find out which one of the following anti-cancer drug may cause disulfiram-like reaction mean think of procarbacin. 
on one more very 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 important MCQ question pro carboxyl having mao enzyme inhibitory property that mean mono amino oxidase inhibitory action because of inhibiting mao enzyme this drug may cause cheese reaction problem so find out which is the anti cancer drug having mao enzyme inhibitory action mean think of procarbosin a very important anti cancer drug belonging to alkylating agent then dark carbosin the dark carbosin useful mainly for hodgkins lymphoma as well as useful for malignant melanoma and finally timosolamide timosolamide highly lipid soluble so useful for brain tumor remember useful for brain tumor and timosolamide also useful for malignant melanoma and the important adverse effect may cause myelosuppression and also causing constipation and fatigue the main two important problems are constipation and fatigue problem next after finishing so many alkylating agent now we want to the miscellaneous alkylating agent examples are busulfone thiotepa altretamine and trabectidine all are miscellaneous alkylating agent in that the most important drug is busulfone you must know you must know the first chemistry question, question busulfone useful for cml so very good drug for cml but again you should know even though busulfone very important drug useful for cml you should know currently for cml the first line drug of choice is imatinib a tyrosine kinase inhibitor imatinib is the first line drug of choice for cml anyway remember alkylating agent very useful for cml mean think of busulfone coming to adverse effect busulfone causes pulmonary fibrosis very important causing pulmonary fibrosis and also causes adrenal insufficiency that mean addison disease we know in addison disease there will be skin hyperpigmentation dark color skin so remember busulfone causes mostly pulmonary fibrosis and also causing adrenal insufficiency resulting in hyperpigmentation in the skin and also causes cataract problem coming to thiotepa thiotepa useful for breast cancer as well as bladder cancer then all three tamine useful for ovarian cancer an important adverse effect may cause neurotoxicity and one more drug trabectidine it is acting on n2 position of guanine residue most of the alkali acting on n7 position trabectidine acting on n2 position of guanine residue useful for ovarian cancer and causing adverse effect of hepatotoxicity that finishes one very important group of anti cancer drug alkylating agent read well thank you question number 16 all of the following monoclonal antibodies are targeting against programmed death one receptor except options are nivolumab pembrolizumab epilumumab and c plimab the right answer for question is option number c epilimumab epilimumab a antibody targeting against ctla4 called cytotoxic t lymphocyte associated antigen ctla4 blocker so now we are going to discuss what are all the most important pd1 blocker and other ctla4 blocker so it's a very important question please follow me we have some drug called epilumumab 
87 bone antibody targeting against CTLA4. CTLA mean cytotoxic T lymphocyte associated protein or associated antigen 4 CTLA4 and then nivolumab and pembrolizumab. These two drugs are targeting against PD-1 programmed death to one receptor. These three drugs, epilimumab, nivolumab, pembrolizumab, useful for treatment of malignant melanoma. Okay, very important, very important. Epilimumab targeting against CTLA4, cytotoxic T lymphocyte associated protein 4, useful for malignant melanoma. Then, we have one more important drug comes under CTLA4 blocker called Trimilumumab. It is also CTLA4 inhibitor. Now, Nivolumab in addition to melanoma useful for Hodgkin's lymphoma as well as non-small cell lung cancer. Pembrolizumab in addition to melanoma useful for non-small cell lung cancer as well as head and neck cancer. Anyway, in general you should know Epilumumab, Nivolumumab and Pembrolizumab are important monoclonal antibody useful for malignant melanoma. Next, we have one drug called CEMI, Semiplimab. There is a drug targeting against programmed death 1, PD-1. It's an immune checkpoint inhibitor useful for treatment of squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Question number 17. Regarding mycophenolate mofetil, false statement is. Options are, it's a pro-drug, inhibiting inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase, can be used to oral and parental roots. Option D has bone marrow sparing action. Here, find out the false statement regarding mycophilic. The right answer for the question is option number D. Mycophilic mofetil is immunosuppression causing myelosuppression. Definitely causing myelosuppression. So, it has no bone marrow sparing action. It will cause myelosuppression. Now we are going to discuss the important properties of mycophilid mofetil. Useful as a DMAOD is mycophenolate. Mycophenolate actually immunosuppressant. It's purine anti-metabolite. Actually, it's a pro-drug. Pro -drug. This drug converted into active form called mycophenolic acid. So, mycophenolic acid is an active form of mycophenolate. What is the mechanics action? The mechanics action of mycophenolate is inhibiting inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase, simply called IMD, IMD, inhibiting inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase. As immunosuppressant, useful for various immunological conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE and vaginous granulomatosis. I told already, any anti-metabolite, the most common problem, myelosuppression. So, mycophenolate also causes side effect of bone marrow suppression. And also have a risk of causing GI toxicity, hypotoxicity and also causing hypertension. Of course, mycophenolate is contraindicated in pregnancy patient. So, the finishes some important chemical demods. So, chemical demod mean the first important choice will be methotrexate. Other drugs are we have sulfasalazine, lefronamide, asatheprine, mycophenolate. Other than this, we have something chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, cyclophosphamide. They are also useful, but 
chemical demod most commonly used in practice mean methotrexate next is sulfasalazid other drugs are lefrodamide mycophenolate chloroquine hydroxychloroquine that precious emphasis on chemical demods which of the following diabetes medication is most appropriately paired with their adverse effects option given are ganagliflozin causing uti nati glinate causing heart failure glipizide causing weight loss lactate causing lactic acidosis now go through one by one ganagliflozin a sglt2 inhibitor causing glycosuria glycosuria causing uti so the right answer for the question is option number a whereas option b nati glinate is a non sulfonyl urea causing insulin secretion the drug causing side effect of hypoglycemia whereas heart failure is the adverse effect of pyoglitazone pyoglitazone so question anti diabetic drug on chronic therapy causing heart failure mean think of pyoglitazone option c glipizide glipizide is the sulfonyl urea sulfonyl urea are insulin secretor gauge and their common adverse effects are hypoglycemia and weight gain remember sulfonyl causes weight gain and finally option d liraglutide liraglutide a glp1 analog that is glucagon like peptide analog causing weight loss and this drug approved for treatment of obesity it not causing lactic acidosis lactic acidosis side effects of bigonates penformin a bigonate was withdrawn because of lactic acidosis whereas metformin also having risk of causing lactic acidosis in the presence of kidney failure or liver failure or heart failure or respiratory failure or in chronic alcoholism so the right answer for the question is option a glyphosate gamma glyphosate sglt2 blocker causing uti question number 19 which one of the following is the longest acting phospho diesterase 5 enzyme blocker useful in the treatment of erectile dysfunction option given are sildenafil tadalafil verdinafil option d avenafil the right answer for the question is option number b tadalafil so pde5 blockers are a group of drug useful for treatment of erectile dysfunction example for this category drugs are we having sildenafil verdinafil tadalafil and avenafil in this our question is which is the longest acting answer tadalafil important important next mcq mechanics action these drugs are inhibiting phospho diesterase 5 enzyme thereby accumulating cyclic gmp we know cyclic gmp is a smooth muscle relaxant causing vasodilatation bd mean vasodilatation by causing vasodilatation useful for treatment of erectile dysfunction remember they are also useful for treatment of primary pulmonary hypertension point number 2 all these drugs are undergo metabolism by cyp3a4 enzyme so when you give them along with the cyp3a4 inhibitor these drugs level get increases so resulting in drug interaction and one more very 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 important drug interaction is nitrates a group of drug useful for treatment of angina acting by accumulating cyclic gmp so when you give when you give sildenafil with the nitrate both of them accumulating cyclic gmp causes 
severe vaso dilatation causing risk of sudden hypotensive shock sometimes death can occur so sildenafil should not be given along with the nitrate is very important important the other important points are all these drugs are vaso dilator no because of vaso dilatation acutely they causes side effect of hypotension headache nasal congestion sometimes facial flushing so all these are due to vaso dilatation but on chronic therapy of sildenafil on chronic therapy sildenafil also inhibit pde6 enzyme in the retina thereby causing color vision defect blue color vision defect is the problem of sildenafil on chronic therapy after finishing pd5 blocker you should know what are all the other drug useful for treatment of erectile dysfunction they includes apomorphine a d4 agonist trazodone a atypical antidepressant avaptadil a vaso intestinal polypeptide ketenserin a serotonin antagonist naltrexone a opioid antagonist and then some herbal medicine like ginseng kava and ginkgo biloba all these the herbal medicine useful for treatment of erectile dysfunction other than this you should know one more very important question there are some drug given as a injection into the penis they call pipe therapy pipe therapy that is papaverin or fentalamine induced penis erection therapy that is there are some drug injected into the cavernous that is uh, intra cavernous injection into penis thereby causing penis vaso dilatation causing erection drug names are alprostadil so pg e1 analog prostaglandin e1 analog fentolamine a non selective alpha blocker blocking both alpha 1 alpha 2 non selective alpha blocker papaverin actually a opioid having non selective phospho diesterase enzyme inhibition papaverin so all these three drugs are injectable drug useful for treatment of erectile dysfunction after finishing this you should know one more interesting point a sexual problem can be three different type one is called premature ejaculation one more thing called delayed orgasm one more thing poor interest in sex now for treating premature ejaculation the best options are ssri selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor along with the supportively pd5 blocker and there are some people having problem of delay in ejaculation for them to promote ejaculation we can prescribe a drug called amantadine or buspirone or ciproheptadine whereas to create sexual interest we have some drug called yohimbine a alpha 2 antagonist zinc and some herbal medicine like ginkgo biloba and ginseng they are useful as a sexual stimulant now question number 20 which one of the following drug is useful in the treatment of vitreo macular attenuation look at the picture doctor so vitreous macula there is a attenuation so which is the drug useful for treatment of vitreo macular attenuation the option given are acriplasmin nitarsudil moxidectin rifabutin the right answer is acriplasmin this important question you must know question acriplasmin useful for treating vitreo macular attenuation then coming to option b nitarsudil actually speaking nitarsudil is a rokinase enzyme inhibitor useful for treatment of glaucoma it increases outflow of aqueous via trabecular meshwork so remember we have two important drug nitarsudil one more drug ripasudil both are rokinase 
inhibitor useful for treatment of glaucoma. Coming to option C, moxidectin. Actually, it's an ivermectin derivative useful for treatment of river blindness. Coming to option D, rifabutin. Rifabutin, actually a rifabacin derivative useful for tuberculosis. This drug may cause side effect of one ophthalmic problem called UV atis. UV atis. So, one question. Find out the anti-TB drug causing UV atis mean think of rifabutin. Of course, you should know brimonidine, a yeah, alpha to agonist useful for a glaucoma. This also may cause UV atis. So, drug causing UV atis mean think of brimonidine, a yeah, alpha to agonist. Second drug, rifabutin, a anti-TB drug. That finishes question number 20. Thank you.